the Lord resounded unto me, son of Hubert. Uh, I, from Maple Land in Canada, I was filled with utter amazement for his living word that fell upon my ear. A, a word of imagine from John Lennon, because he and I both agree with Billy uh, Graham, who was snubbed by religious Christianity. So it's time to reverse our curse and let the happy say they know it and let them be. And I'm Daniel from the north, Isaiah 41 predicted. And one thing is for sure, it's time to put big spotlights on injustices because things have to have a restoration of all th things, the great refreshing, the great restitution of earth. And Isaiah 61 predicts that money from people all over the globe is going to flow in to help rebuild this world for our very best age to come. Uh, and so realize now, truthfully, that the most I ironic hypocrisy of especially Christians, ignoring my prophetic word of Christ's unconditional everlasting love, is not only do I say that Christ came in the flesh, as the Bible says all true believers do believe, but as I preach that resurrected uh, Lion of Zion, uh, they foolishly are boycotting my channel and ignoring my most passionate uh, YouTube messages of all time. And they, with their unloving ways, are missing a great opportunity to share this with the unloving world so they too can come to believe in the prophecy of the Word of God, uh, unadulterated, that I have always been preaching. And then regardless of whatever they uh, used to believe, uh, they will still end up choosing to believe that Jesus is love. So why am I being uh, uh, ostracized and cut off from the land when if anyone believed me, they would believe in Jesus, would they not? So get off your high horse. Hello? <laughs> oh boy, boy, oh boy. What's that song? Uh, Spare a horse, ride a cowboy? I'm a Western guy. I like the country. Garth Brooks and me go way back. But one thing is for sure, it's days of new rolling thunder and the lightning of his word goes from the east to the west within but a flash of a flash. Uh, and in this hour, it's time to realize that ignorant, unloving Christians are now mocking this channel, not even giving a damn if anyone profits by the inspiration of love herein as they all just snub uh, this foretold ministry uh, that is so freely flowing with kingdom age love upon the earth which is ever shrinking at this channel. So let all foolish people of love repent uh, over all of their false prophet bullshit. And most blessed shall all those of love be who have finally learned to admire, uh, uh, not only uh, to admire, but not to envy, to follow, but not to, to imitate, and to praise, but not flatter, and to lead, but not manipulate and so I have a cheers for you I have a uh, neck issues oh I got a praise report in the middle here uh, I thought I was had a cancer growing and I found out I got a very bad case of arthritis which is not great news pain associated is not pleasant but uh, I thanked my uh, doctor for telling me it was arthritis because I, I had already self-diagnosed myself. I've always tended to be a, a worry boy. So let all fools like me repent of all their uh, craziness and all, all false prophet bullshit out there that's preaching the risen Lamb of God. And most blessed, do you realize that the Bible says all calling upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? People, you don't even believe your own book if you're doubting what I'm preaching. So uh, all of those who have finally learned to admire uh, but not envy, they, they learn to praise but not flatter and to lead but not manipulate. i got to stress that. 
uh, and really blessed are all those of new kingdom age hopes arising. And as I, the son of Hubert and Lois, received the, 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 his love's most fervent inspirations from on high, uh, his, the presence of his most loving kindness then befell me as it did its glorious presence of peace, then shattered my brain along with my deepest heart of hearts. And when the Lord's whirlwind of his most precious, unconditional love uh, swirled around my shocked spiritual senses, uh, his most amazing electrifying empowerment then enveloped me since it came forth holding the most incredible passion of all the poets put together since the word of God uh, was opening, just as uh, Daniel 12, 9 said it would for the end days so that the message of Malachi 3, 1 could come forth, the kingdom age covenant of love. And so in this hour, we need to, to realize it came forth within but a moment of a moment. And as it did, I was, uh, I understood by that fantastic uh, revealed word of divine knowledge that I was receiving that uh, it has always, always, evermore, always, it's always been our Alpha and Omega, Isa Yeshua, Jesus alone, uh, who has been all of our truest inspiration of us all. And his energizing Kingdom Age word then came forth to my beholding, and as it did, the honey of his love's greatest sweetness then gripped down upon me as the purest living water, and I could tell it was coming up from the most marvelous, bottomless ocean of his love's adoration, uh, greatest for one and all of us. So, and then that came forth most powerfully as a splendid, glorious sun of righteousness arising to completely destroy all of the gross darkness from all of our unloving spirituality, just as Isaiah 64 told for this hour. And within that holy presence, I finally understood why the white horseman of Revelation 6 has always been Christ alone as he rides in combat against the pale, the black, uh, and the speckled horses of famine, war, and disease. And his spirit of truth then quickened my spirit uh, as he showed me himself riding ever so majestically upon his whitest steed. And as John the Revelator said, I then saw that our everlasting Lord of his unconditional love over all of us, I noticed that he had a, 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 a long bow, but yet I saw no arrows at all. So in the spirit, without even opening my mouth, uh, men, uh, telepathy, I guess you would call it, uh, I then uh, asked without uh, talking, I asked that warrior love, and he understood. I asked him how he could fight against those other, those, those three evil horse uh, with, without a weapon. And then that son of man said unto me, he said, Daniel, my son of love's best kingdom age hopes, you alone are my secret weapon against all unloving ways. And as Isaiah 49 so accurately foretold, so shall it be, said that beloved of love unto me, just as Isaiah 29-2 uh, uh, says, by my living word, oh, Isaiah 49, uh, says, ver second verse, I have made your mouth like a, a razor sharp sword, and in my hand I have long been hiding you, Daniel, as my arrow of victory over lovelessness across the lands. And I have made you into a polished, polished shaft, and I have long been hiding you in my quiver, until these latter days when you have been glorifying my love in front of unloving, mocking people uh, as they are slowly letting their love die while walking on the very wide road to hellish torture where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and being cast into love's thickest and most ignorant outer darkness. And through you, I, the Lord said unto me, you, the uncle of Bronson, Colt, and Tristan, Shall I evermore have my love endlessly glorified by you and through you? And as the vision shifted to another scene, I then uh, heard the Lord's Spirit really quietly saying to me that I could now behold the truth of the alcoholic end-time revelator as Zechariah described. 
And so I've had a couple open-eyed visions. And one of them, I've, I've already told, I'm not going to retell her right now, but one I saw my wife Linda, and she's been a vital tool that the Lord has used in my life, and I'll love her forever. But uh, this vision that I'm about to read, whew, wow, talk about blowing my head. But here it is, and this is the um, prophecy of the writer of the Flying Scroll, the writer of the Everlasting Gospel. And by the way, uh, Sir Isaac Newton said in the latter days that Elijah Taft's servant would arise insisting on his literal interpretation of Bible prophecy admits much clamor and much opposition, but with a sharp tongue, whew, slice and dice. I pity the fool that tries to debate me. Uh, I won't name any names, uh, but it starts with an R. <laughs> R, 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 R. And so then suddenly the, my vision then sh shifted to a whole different scene. And I heard the Lord's uh, Spirit quietly say unto me that I could now behold that truth of Him choosing me as an alcoholic because uh, when I was 18, I heard His audible voice fall upon me and in that moment he told me to do something I said no it's impossible and then I was groaning and finally he says walk to the driveway and the guy you're waiting for would be coming in the driveway meanwhile it was like dark and he never got there until like 11 o'clock in the morning when he was and so I told him, he's not there, look, it's dark up there. And within uh, less than a minute, bang, this guy was coming. And, and actually, uh, it was at Brentwood Home for Recovering Alcoholics is where I was at. And I was with a tough old uh, Catholic uh, um, uh, founder of Brentwood in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, great place, good, good meaning people. But uh, he said, give me your Bible, it doesn't belong here, it's a crutch. And the Lord just wanted me to see that coming from a Catholic priest. And so uh, the Lord said that he would show me as Zechariah long ago described. I'm gonna do something here, folks, because I'm old. I got me an excuse. And I know you're gonna like this. This is the same alcoholic that Genesis 49, 12 foretold one eyes, whose eyes are red and dull of wine, and Habakkuk 2, one transgressed by wine, but the just will live by his faith. And so, uh, one more sip of uh, pop. And so it came about that uh, then within but an instant of an instant, uh, I beheld the Lord's heavenly sapphire bottomless see of his forgiveness, his forgetfulness, as his exploding word within my scene held the most resplendent beauty of a sapphire, ruby, and emerald rainbow, as its overflowing energy of love's very best peace exploded inwardly, kaboom, within me, uh, with the fiercest ferocity of cyclones, hurricanes, and twisters, all gone mad altogether, and yet such natural storms uh, were only, I knew, really a, just a weak force of absolutely no compare when placed to our beloved's most boundless tender mercies that he wants to extend unto all of us. And then without any warning, uh, my div uh, divine blessedness of this vision then suddenly shifted one more time drastically so that I could see myself standing as his latter day foretold Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, before the Lord's great white throne by his spirit of prophecy. And then I unexpectedly beheld myself standing there with a whole lot of barf all over me, all over my clothes. And I stank, I hadn't had a bath, dirt was in my hair, and I was just filthy all over. Uh, I'd fallen down a um, uh, stairs and I had a vision. Uh, and uh, it was from bad a bad booze night. And man, I, I got a couple broken ribs back then. I didn't even realize it because I was so drunk. I just kind of bounced around. And so Christ then showed me myself uh, and it, because I was his chosen. And he had chosen me to become his end time revelator like Moses had said in Acts 3. 
Uh, and he, then Moses named that person as Joshua because the original Elijah and the original Daniel had not yet ever lived, and he knew not that name. And I was then standing as a selected priest in that vision before the angel of the Lord, uh, which is the most majestic name of our majesty of majesties, our amazing ancient of days, our Alpha and Omega. And I then suddenly beheld Lucifer standing next to Christ as the accuser of the brethren. And I got to say, I was really kind of wondering what that snake of Eden was uh, doing, condescendingly looking down upon me, as all Christians out there do, by the way, making me wonder what the heck is going up with such foolish, stupid noise. And so I heard the Lord then say unto Satan, I rebuke you, Satan, if you have any problem with this glue sniffer being my appointed end time revelator before he commits suicide. And uh, then he said, because I have plucked him out of the fires of alcoholism's uh, satanic abuse by allowing my audible voice to fall upon the ears of his spirit. And he did that to me when I was 18. And since I was there with filthy garments, the Lord then commanded some of his hosts to bring me his finest silken robes. And when they returned, Emmanuel commanded them to let me change after being instructed to take away my filthiest garments. Uh, and unto me the Lord then said in the vision, he said, Behold my everlasting kingdom, age, new covenant, uh, by it I have caused all of your iniquity, Daniel, to pass away from you so that you be unashamed in this life as I clothe you with the brightest and most vibrant raiment of my most vibrant promised rainbows of my unconditional love that you shall reveal for me as my messenger of Malachi 3 who prepares Christ's royal way for the royal priesthood of peculiar ignorant people. <laughs> And then he says, and you shall preach through YouTube to all nations and to the 12 tribes of my house of Israel. And our carpenter of the ages then told those hosts to bring me a golden victor's crown of his iron-clad kingdom age authority, exactly as Genesis 49 says, uh, for the latter day alcoholic that I am. And our Prince of Peace then said unto me, Daniel of Windsor, uh, if you'll walk by my holy ways of love, and if you'll keep my charge upon your life to be my messenger of Malachi 3's kingdom age covenant for all flesh, then I shall also judge my own house by love alone. And I shall give you red ruddy places to walk among those of that end time Joshua generation that are standing by. Then the Lord said unto me that I and Christopher of Alberta's Law of the Light Red Ruddy YouTube channel, that we are both being called as two anointed ones standing before the Lord of all the earth as high priests of love. And there are many others that will join us. And all of our friends of love shall then be graciously seated before us upon the Lord's latter-day mountain of Isaiah 25's overflowing places that's covered with great gourmet delicacy of his love's very best kind of spiritual food of overflowing hope, uh, faith, peace, and love. And so the Lord says, And when you give the covenant of Jeremiah 1.10, uh, his appointment was to tear everything down. That, that will then pull down all kingdoms of man built upon false conditional love of mine, says the Lord. And soon as you say uh, the new covenant and give it one time, it will come to pass on that day I will instantly remove the shame and guilt of all iniquity within that day exactly as Isaiah foretells once people know about it. Uh, right now, people are just going to be living with their shame and guilt until they find out about this glorious good news of the everlasting gospel. And then he told me that both Chris of uh, Red Ruddy and I, that we'd both be teaching in a day to come about his swiftly arising kingdom of love upon our shrinking circle of the earth. And tears will then be drying up during those times of great refreshing 
foretold in Acts 3.21. For that shall become a most happy time when multitudes in those days of love's overflowing blessedness will come to see, as Joel prophesied, that Eden really has always been ahead of us uh, in the golden age of God's lion and the lamb forthcoming. So let all people of love now celebrate love's greatest jubilee of jubilees, for the days are swiftly racing towards most wondrous days, says the Spirit, when every man and his neighbor will finally be living like brothers of other mothers as they sip wine under the vine and eat from their most abundant fig trees. But then, here was the big one, and uh, this really sp spun my head. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make one more video because this is already 20 minutes. So you got to catch. This is the oomph of my vision. Cliffhanger. Ah. <laughs>